Hello, my name's Bev and I'm the author of the book Please Eat, A Mother's Struggle to Free Her Teenage Son from Anorexia, which describes our family's battle with the deadly eating disorder, anorexia nervosa, which my teenage son Ben developed back in 2009 when he was just 15 years old. This post is from the 12th of September 2011 and it's called Memory is a Funny Thing and I'd just like to add that there may be some things on here that some listeners may find upsetting um, references to potential suicide etc. So yeah, I'm just giving you that warning. Anyway, here goes. It's funny how the human memory manages to forget or at least blur many of life's traumatic experiences. It sounds strange, but for some reason I find it really hard to recall how I really felt day in, day out during the bad old eating disorder days. I forget just how bad things were and how petrified I was. I forget how I came to accept that Ben might die, if not from the complications of self-starvation, then by ending his own life. I forget how I used to break down in uncontrollable tears several times each day, and how on some days things would get so stressful that I'd be reduced to a total wreck like the day I smashed an entire dinner service, plate by plate, on the kitchen floor, then collapsed in a historical weeping heap in the corner. Not to mention the day I had to pull Ben inside by the legs when he tried to climb out of his Velux loft window onto the roof, not caring if he fell or the two emergency hospital experiences with Ben wired up to machines. In fact, the bad days were so frequent that I can't possibly list them all here. What you see above was just the tip of the iceberg. But I believe it's vital that I don't forget. This is why I've kept copies of everything I've written on the subject, emails, letters, notes to medical people, my threads on the Around the Dinner Table forum for parents of young people with eating disorders, this blog, and so on. And now some new stuff that's come to light, but more about that in a moment. In some way, I'd like to use this to help other parents of teenage boys with eating disorders. If nothing else, then at least to show them that there is a light at the end of this terrible, dark tunnel. And in the case of this blog post, to show that your memories of the dark days will fade. And at some point in the future, it will dawn on you that life is pretty damn near normal. Or at least a zillion miles away from what it was at the eating disorder's height. My dear friend Sheila, the school nurse, reminded me on Friday that she'd suggested back in June that I put it all into a book. And maybe I will, but I've got so much stuff that it's hard to know where to start. Meanwhile, something else has come to light, which has prompted me to suggest that Ben gets involved in all of this at a grassroots level. The other day he produced an exercise book. It was called My Diary from 2009, just to prove how far I've come since then. There weren't many entries because, he says, I got to the point where I couldn't even write. The anorexic thoughts were taking up so much space in my head. But even though there aren't many entries, it's interesting to read what Ben was going through from his perspective back in the summer of 2009 when the eating disorder started to manifest itself, even though it has actually been present for some time before that, as can be seen from 
one of the previous videos. I suggested that when he has a spare moment, he uses these diary entries as a base for writing about his own experiences. Not loads of stuff, Ben, just a page and a half of A4-ish. And he's very keen about the idea of a book. Just think, he says, we get onto the telly, we become rich and famous. He was joking. And I don't think so, Ben, <laughs> especially if the said book is to be self-published. And that's the end of that entry. As I began to collate information for my book, Ben was very much involved, which was really good. And that's why if you read my book or you follow the intro chapters, which you'll find below, in the videos below, you'll know that the book includes lots of stuff from Ben, his own perspective on what was going through his head at particular points during the eating disorder, which is actually very helpful. Anyway, thanks for listening. You'll find a link below to my blog. And you'll also find a link to my website where you can download free PDFs of my blog and also a link to Amazon where you can buy a copy of my book.